alternating current. Faraday's discovery of electromagnetic induction played an important role in the development of the electric generator. An electric generator transforms mechanical energy, mechanical energy, into electrical energy by rotating a coil of wire, here's the coil of wire, in a magnetic field. And the magnetic field is supplied by this bar magnet here, north pole, south pole, and then it extends down also. The coil of wire is rotated through the magnetic field by turning the handle over here, and you've got this little pulley arrangement, and you've got a little rubber band there moving it around. So this coil turns, and that generates electricity, which will light this light bulb. The coil of wire in a commercial electric generation plant is turned by harnessing the force of falling water or steam. The coil of wire in the electric generator in a car, also known as an alternator, and here's the coil. It's inside here, inside these uh, big gray metal plates. It's turned by rubber belts driven by the engine that are connected to the pulley. Here's your pulley here. And you've got belts coming off of this that goes to the car's engine and that turns the coil of wire inside, which is inside a magnetic field, and it generates electricity for the car's use. Electric generators usually produce alternating current. The flow of electric charge switches back and forth many times per second. The alternative to alternating current is direct current, or DC, in which current flows only in one direction. Home electric outlets provide AC. In the U.S. and Canada, the current switches direction 60 times a second and is called 60 Hz. Other countries use 50 Hz AC current. Many devices work from AC, for example, lighting, washing machines, refrigerators. However, some devices operate on direct current. These include devices that can be powered by batteries since batteries are a source of DC. Examples of DC devices include laptops and cell phones. To power these devices, when you're not using the battery, AC from the wall, from your wall in your house or office, is converted to DC by an AC adapter. The two graphs show the time variation of DC and AC in electric circuits. Here's time in both cases, and here's current. DC is constant and always flows in the same direction. AC is constantly changing, gets to a maximum, zero, minimum, and it keeps oscillating like that, 60 times per second. It is hard to imagine our life without AC. It became so popular because of its simple production and, most importantly, its long-distance transmission through electrical lines. Electric power companies generate electricity from 2,300 to 22,000 volts. They then increase or step up the voltage to approximately 350,000 to 800,000 volts using something called a transformer. Why do they do that? The increased voltage minimizes energy loss in the transmission wire, so more of that energy gets to your home. The voltage is then stepped down through a series of transformers to the 120 volts that are used in homes in the U.S and 240 volts used in the rest of the world. A transformer is a device for increasing or decreasing an AC voltage. They're found everywhere, in TV sets, on utility poles, in converters, and chargers. That adapter we showed earlier, in addition to changing AC to DC for your cell phone, also reduces the voltage from 120 volts to the smaller voltage that the phones use. This transformer is part of the electrical distribution system that decreases the transmission line voltage to the 120 volts that is provided to your house. You could probably look around where you live and see these uh, transformers all over your neighborhood. The different components of an electrical distribution system are shown here. Here's our power plant generating electricity. The first transformers step up the voltage for transmission. The transmission lines carry the electricity over long distances, then it gets to your neighborhood. It steps the voltage down here, goes up on the poles here in your neighborhood, goes to other poles, and then near a smaller group of houses, you have one more transformer here. 
that steps the electricity down, the voltage, one more time to the 120 volts that will be used in homes. A transformer consists of two coils of wire. Here's one coil, here's the other coil. You have a primary and a secondary coil. The coils are linked by a soft iron core which enables all the magnetic flux produced in the primary coil, primary coil to pass through to the secondary coil. And those coils are not electrically connected, they're separate from each other. Transformers are 99% efficient in transferring electrical energy from the primary over to the secondary. Very little is turned into heat. When an AC voltage is applied to the primary coil, right, primary voltage here, the changing magnetic field it produces will induce an AC voltage of the same frequency in the secondary coil. But the magnitude of the secondary voltage depends on the number of turns in each coil. So perhaps you can see there's a lot of turns here in the primary coil. On the secondary, not so many. And this is what's going to change the magnitude of the voltage. The ratio between the secondary and the primary voltage is called the transformer equation. Okay, you have the voltage in the secondary, voltage in the primary, number of coils in the secondary, number of coils in the primary. If NS is greater than NP, we have a step-up transformer. The secondary voltage is greater than the primary voltage. If NS is less than NP, and that's the case here, okay, this is NS over here, NP. When you have that, you have a step-down transformer. The secondary voltage is less than the primary voltage. So you would have one of these on, that, on the uh, transformer on the pole outside the homes in your neighborhood.